Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Wow, friends, that's a bold statement. But as God begins to enlighten my understanding of faith, I now understand as to why this statement is so strong. No, it's not that God is upset with us if we don't take him at his word as we should. Rather, faith is our God-given ability to operate on God's level, which is supernatural. God is never pleased to see us struggle when we've been given his power to produce everything we need Friends, I hope you're ready to continue this journey with me. Join me now for more of Mountain Moving Faith. Well, praise the Lord and welcome back to the Word of Healing broadcast. Today, we're going to continue in our teaching entitled Mountain Moving Faith. You know, friends, God has given to you and me the ability to remove mountains. What is a mountain? A mountain represents anything in your life that is impeding your progress toward the will of God. It might be a mountain of sickness. It might be a mountain of financial lack. It might be a mountain of strife in a relationship. Whatever your mountain is, God has given you His faith so that you can speak to the mountain and see it removed out of your way. Listen, do me a favor, call a family member, a friend, or a coworker. Tell them to join me today because I believe the revelation from the Word of God that you're about to receive is going to literally lift your life to a whole nother level. So let's jump right into it. Let's go over to the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1, in the book of James chapter 1, and verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom... Let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Verse 6 says, But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. For let not that man, what man is he referring to? The man who wavers. Verse 7 says, For let not that man, the wavering man, think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Notice the Bible says if any man lack wisdom. Now you can insert into this portion of scripture whatever it is that you might lack. If any man lacks healing, if any man lacks finances, if any man lacks wisdom, if any man lacks favor, if any man lacks whatever it is that you lack, peace or joy, so forth and so on. He said, if you're lacking anything, he said, your responsibility is to ask in faith, nothing wavering. I believe God has given us his faith so that we can ask for things with boldness and without doubt. You know, friends, when you pray in faith with the God kind of faith that I'm teaching about, you will begin to see amazing things happen in your life. You know, Satan will bring symptoms of sickness and disease upon your body in an attempt to make your faith waver so that you will begin to doubt. And as a result, you will not receive your healing. Paul told the, the Corinthians over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, he says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Friends, you don't walk by sight. In other words, you're not to allow the things that you see and the things that uh, you experience on the outside of you. You're not to allow those things to determine your faith. We're not to live our life based on how we think or what we see or how we feel. No, we are to live our lives controlled and guided by the word of God. That's what the God kind of faith has been implanted in your heart to do. This is what many Christians are doing today. They are allowing their lives to be governed by their senses. They're walking by their feelings. They're walking by what they can see and, 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 and what they hear instead of walking and living their lives governed 
by the faith of God, a supernatural faith. Amen. Praise God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to have victory, if we're going to see the promises of God manifested in our life, if we're going to experience God's best in every area, we're going to have to learn how to live by the faith of God that's in us. You remember what the Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That's right, friends. You've got to learn how to live by the faith that comes from the Son of God. You know, this is the only way that you can experience total life prosperity. This is the only way that you can experience God's very best. Because without faith, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6, it is impossible to please God. Jesus taught and dramatically illustrated to his disciples the supernatural faith that they were to have operating in their lives. And I believe that this is the same faith that he expects to operate in our life. In fact, let's turn over here to Mark chapter 11. And let's begin to look at the supernatural faith that operated through the ministry and life of Jesus. Because this is the same faith that God wants to operate through you. St. Mark chapter number 11. And let's begin at verse 12. St. Mark, the 11th chapter. And let's begin at verse 12. And we'll read down through verse 24. Notice it says, And on tomorrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it. Now remember, he's, he's talking to the fig tree. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Verse 15, And they come to, uh, to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and brought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And when he was come, uh, he went out of the city. And the Bible says in verse 20, And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. Now notice verse 22. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Or we could say have faith of God. That's a more accurate translation of this 22nd verse. Verse 23. For truly I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Wow. Now, Jesus is teaching us, and he's showing us the power of the supernatural faith of God. Jesus was standing in Bethany, the Bible said, and, and traveling back and forth to Jerusalem while he was ministering and teaching during the day. And one morning, the scripture says, on the road to Jerusalem, Jesus was hungry. And so he came to a fig tree that was covered with leaves to see if he could find any fruit on it. Uh, the Bible says that fruit season had not yet come, so there was no fruit on the tree. Now, Jesus finding no fruit on the tree, the Bible says that he spoke to the tree. And Now, notice what he said to the tree. No man eat fruit fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the Bible says his disciples heard it. Mark eleven fourteen. 14. Now he did not curse the tree because he was angry that it had failed to produce any fruit, but rather he cursed the tree, I believe, to teach his disciples a dramatic and dynamic truth about faith. A dynamic truth about faith. Now, listen to this. Jesus and his disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem. And the Bible says the next morning they returned and Peter calling to remembrance because Jesus wasn't even going to take time to stop and look at the tree because he knew that what he said had affected the tree. The Bible said, and Peter calling to his remembrance, Master, look, the tree that you cursed has withered 
away. It was dried up from the roots. Now, with great astonishment, Peter said, man, how did this happen? Look at this tree. You just cursed it and now it is dried up from the roots. And uh, I want you to notice in verse 21, look at Mark 11:21. 21. And Peter calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering, verse 22, and said unto them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith of God. So in other words, Jesus was saying to Peter, listen, don't get all beside yourself thinking that what I've done was so great. In fact, you can do what I've done, but here's the secret. You've got to have faith in God. Edward Kirkpatrick is on a mission to bring the power of healing back to this generation. And he wants to give you the opportunity to be a part of this massive revival of the power of God. Call or go online today to find out how you can become a Word of Healing partner with Edward Kirkpatrick Ministries. For your small tax-deductible gift of just $20 per month, you can impact life-giving, powerful ministries like Pastor Kirkpatrick's School of Healing. We're the leaders of the next wave of revival and healing are being personally discipled. You will also help to expand our media outreach and humanitarian efforts around the world in desperate places like Guatemala and Africa. But these kingdom benefits are not all that you'll receive. As your introductory gift, you'll receive a handsome notepad, caddy, and stylus pen. Use these at home or work to study the word and organize your life each and every day. Then every month, you receive a ministry letter with a fresh word from Pastor Kirkpatrick. You'll also be able to connect with Pastor Kirkpatrick directly along with the army of other Word of Healing partners through the monthly Empowerment and Healing Power Call. Act now and join Edward Kirkpatrick to receive the power of healing. All it takes is less than a dollar a day, $20 a month, and together we will reach souls around the world for the kingdom. Call, go online today, or text to give 336-203-0603. Join the movement today. Are you ready to move into that realm where nothing is impossible to you? Praise God. When you have the faith of God and you speak, there will be no doubting. There will be no wavering. And listen, if you will not doubt, Jesus says you will have whatsoever you say. You know, friends, I believe when you speak God's word with faith of God, there'll be no need to repeat a verse of scripture over and over again. No, I believe you'll speak it one time and you'll believe just like Jesus did when he cursed the fig tree. He walked right past that fig tree, not even going to look at it because he knew that what he said had already come to pass. He had faith of God in him and he had spoken to that tree and he knew the results would be exactly what he said. Friends, you can have the assurance today that with the faith of God, you too can speak to your mountains. You don't have to climb the mountains. You don't have to pray to God about the mountains. See, that's the problem with a lot of us. We've been talking to God about our situation. We've been talking to God about how big the mountain is and how problematic things are in our life. But what God wants you and I to do, instead of talking to him about our issues, he wants us to start talking to our issues talking to them with the faith of God, talking to those issues in our life, knowing that his faith is present in our lives to bring about a positive change. You know, here in Mark 11 and verse 24, I want you to see this again. Jesus is speaking, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now the word believe in Mark 11, 24, uh, in, in the Greek, it refers to more than just a mental ascent. It means a continual reliance and trust upon God. See, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Oftentimes, we, we fail to release this mountain moving faith because we are so dependent on our natural understanding. Paul said that the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God because it's foolishness unto him. If you're going to operate in the faith of God, then you're going to have to divorce from your senses. Oh boy, I hope you catch that. I said if you're going to operate in the faith of God, then you're going to have to divorce from your senses. In other words, you cannot be dependent on your own natural understanding. You've got to understand that faith operates out of the realm of the Spirit, not in the mind not in the arena of the senses. See, there's a big difference between a person's faith in God 
and the faith of God that he imparts within us. I said there is a big difference between a person's faith in God and the faith of God that he imparts within us. It is a faith that we get from him, not one that we struggle to produce according to our mental attitudes or positive confessions of faith. Amen. Jesus was talking about God's faith, God's faith. He was telling his disciples to have the faith of God, the faith that God gives, the faith that comes through God. This is the kind of faith that God wants us to have. Not a faith that we conjure up, not a faith that we muster up through our own human abilities. No, we're talking about a faith that has been supernaturally imparted into you. Let me give you an example. The love of God, when you got born again, the love of God was shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. You know, Paul talked about the love of God in, over in the book of Corinthians. He said it's a love that is, that is never haughty or braggadocious. It's a, a love that endures all things, believes all things. It's a love that never fails. Now, you know, in your own natural ability, you cannot love people with this type of love. It takes God's love, a God kind of love operating in you to love your enemies. You can't love your enemies. You can't, you can't do what the Bible says when he says, if someone smites you on one cheek, turn the other. You can't turn your other cheek in your own love and your own power and your own ability. No, it takes the love of God in you operating through you that will enable you to do that. Well, the same is true with faith. You can't believe without wavering. You can't believe without doubt in your own faith, with your own faith. No, friends, it takes the faith of God, the supernatural faith that comes through Jesus. Are you listening to me? On another occasion, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him to increase their faith. Turn over to Luke chapter 17. So keep this in mind. Jesus said, if you would have faith of God, you could speak to the mountain. See, faith of God, I want you to see the characteristic of faith of God, one of the qualities of faith of God. Faith of God speaks. Faith of God speaks. See, if you're not speaking, the faith of God has not been released. See, it's one thing to believe it in your spirit or in your heart, but it's another thing to speak it out of your mouth. Faith of God speaks. Amen. Faith, righteousness speaks. Now look at this. In Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, and I want you to notice verse 5. Now, of course, Jesus was teaching his disciples about the importance of forgiveness. And uh, here in verse 5, the Bible said, And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Notice who is going to obey. Not God, not the Holy Spirit, but it's going to obey you. What's going to obey you? That circumstance, that situation that you speak to. Are you listening to me? So here, <clears throat> Jesus did not answer them by giving them a formula. The Bible says that Jesus immediately said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed. Or we could say, if you had mountain moving faith. See, mountain moving faith and faith as a grain of mustard seed are the same. So when you hear mountain moving faith, that is equivalent to faith as a grain of mustard seed. Now, you might say, um, well, Pastor Kirkpatrick, you mean to tell me all I need is the faith, the size of a grain of mustard seed? Now, I want to be clear about something. Jesus was not so much as talking about the size of a man's faith. He was talking about the nature of faith. He said, if you had faith as, as a grain of mustard seed. So he's talking about the nature of a mustard seed. You know, a mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds on the earth. In fact, if you hold a mustard seed in your hand and at distance, that seed would become invisible. It would appear invisible because you wouldn't be able to see it because it's so tiny so small. And so faith is like a grain of mustard seed. It is invisible in the natural realm. But this tiny seed that looks invisible will produce a visible harvest. 
See, faith is invisible, but when it is spoken, praise God, when it is operating in the life of a believer who speaks faith of God, it produces visible results. Are you listening to me? And then Jesus goes on and he says in verse six again, and the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say, you might say, you might say, you might say. See, the disciples did not need to increase their faith. No, they needed God's faith to be imparted to them. Friends, you don't need more faith. I've heard Christians praying, Lord, give me more faith. No, you don't need more faith. You just need the faith of God to operate in you. You need the faith of God to manifest in you. See, they had a natural ability to believe, but they did not have the supernatural faith that never wavers or doubts. The faith that can do the impossible. Amen. The faith that can overcome obstacles. Ladies and gentlemen, God has already given you the faith you need. Now, what you've got to do is you've got to begin to release that faith by speaking to your mountain. Quit speaking about your mountain. Quit talking about how big the problem is and how bad things are. You know, we spend more time talking about the mountain, talking about the situation, talking about the circumstance, talking about all of the things we don't have and all of the things that's going wrong. And then we wonder why things are never changing. We wonder why we don't see results. Because, friends, God wants you to release his faith that's in you. You know, one time the disciples were in a boat in the midst of a, a raging storm, and they cried to Jesus in fear. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? St. Mark chapter 4 and verse 40. St. Mark chapter 4 and verse 40. See, Jesus expected them to use the faith of God that was in them to do what he did. Well, you know what he did. The Bible said he rebuked the storm and there was a great calm. See, he rebuked the disciples because they didn't use the faith that they already had. They were waiting on Jesus to do something for them when Jesus had given them the power to do something for themselves. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I want to encourage somebody. You're waiting on God to do something for you when God has given you the power, the faith, his faith, to do something for yourself. You can change your situations today by using the faith of God, by allowing the faith of God to be released out of your mouth. When you begin to speak to your mountains, I'm telling you things are going to begin to change. Things are going to begin to improve, praise God. But what does the enemy want to do? He want to get you into fear. He want to keep you locked into the natural. You know, another time, the Bible records where, where, where Peter uh, miraculously walked on the water toward Jesus. And the Bible said he saw the storm and the wind and it, as it became more and more violent. And he became fearful and filled with fear and panic. And the scripture says he cried out to Jesus to save him. In Matthew chapter 14 and verse 31. See, these disciples were struggling with unbelief. Another time after the resurrection, um, the Bible said that uh, none of the disciples believed the reports that Jesus had risen from the dead. Jesus appeared to them as they were eating, and the scripture says, and he rebuked them for their lack of faith and stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he was risen. St. Mark chapter 16 and verse 14. St. Mark chapter 16 and verse 14. You know, friends, today, don't allow unbelief to hinder the faith of God that is on the inside of you. Begin to speak to your mountains and watch God begin to change things in your life. You don't want to miss next week as we conclude this series on mountain moving faith. I trust that you were blessed. If you were blessed and you believe that your faith, the faith of God can move mountains, call the number on your screen. Let our prayer partners know you just received this word and you believe that your mountains are getting ready to be removed. It doesn't matter how big or small or how rich or poor you are, you have the power to move mountains. You don't need superhuman strength or heroic superpowers. You already have what it takes to move mountains of sickness, depression, and more. Pastor Kirkpatrick calls this mountain moving faith. Mountain moving faith is a life changing word that I believe the body of Christ so desperately needs to hear. 
This teaching will transform the life of every believer that listens to it. Imagine a situation or a circumstance changing the second you speak the Word of God concerning that problem. Or imagine a tumor leaving the body of a family member upon your command. Family, this is where God is calling us to be. This is why the gift of faith is so precious. So I've put together a special four-part DVD package just for you. This series will redefine your faith as a believer while revealing how to see the faith of God working for you and your family. My announcement is coming up next with all the details, so please don't miss out on this special offer. You can begin moving the mountains and roadblocks in your way by calling now to receive your copy of today's program absolutely free. Watch and listen to it again and again to stay inspired on your spiritual journey. But wait, there's more. With your tax-deductible love gift of $21, you'll receive the four-DVD series, Mountain Moving Faith, Pastor Kirk Patrick just spoke about. This series will provide the guidance you need to remove the obstacles keeping you from living the life God has designed for you. If you desire changes in your finances, health, career, family, and life, this powerful teaching series will show you how to use faith to transform your life. That's the four DVD series, Mountain Moving Faith, for your love gift of $21 or more. As you just heard Pastor Kirkpatrick say, God is preparing us to see His power manifest in a way that we've never seen before. Are you ready for it? If so, call or go online now to begin moving the mountains in your way. The details are on your screen. Hello, my name is Edward Kirkpatrick, the Senior Pastor of Abundant Life Church International. And I want to take this opportunity to personally invite you to worship with us at Abundant Life Church International. We welcome the broken, the hurting, the lost, and all of those who are truly seeking an authentic encounter with the power and presence of God. Our worship services are held every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Our midweek empowerment service is every Wednesday evening at 7.15 p.m. And every first Sunday, we host a special healing and miracle service at 6 p.m. So come out and join us as we empower all believers to live the abundant life of Jesus Christ by the teaching of God's Word with simplicity and understanding. We look forward to seeing you soon right here at Abundant Life Church International. I pray that God has brought you into a deeper level of understanding where the subject of faith is concerned. I want to encourage you, take your notes from today, meditate on the truth you've just received, allow the Holy Spirit to download His vision of what He's saying to you personally. I know for a fact that the enemy doesn't want you to get this revelation, but I decree and declare that it's yours. Nothing will stop you from operating in the God kind of faith. Until next time, I'm Edward Kirkpatrick reminding you that God loves you and so do I. Bye-bye.